point for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could you call Ms. Williams? Mr. Lyons. Here. Mrs. Misbach. Here. Mr. Kashani. Here. Dr. Campbell. Here. Mr. DeTulio. Dr. Mihalik. Here. Dr. Meyer. Here. Mr. Moy. Here. Mrs. Swope. Here. Thank you. Do we have any visitors, virtual or otherwise? We do not. There's no one here in the uh, DeWitt nor on the on phone. Great. Then we can move right to item 2.01, continuity learning update. Dr. Okay. Miller. Yep. Thank you. I placed a quick thumbnail sketch in public content so it can be seen. I'm planning to share the five point podcast by Thursday around noon or so. Uh, working through all the groups within the district, uh, leadership groups, teacher leaders, etc. But the purpose of that is really to paint a picture, not just for today and tomorrow, but really for the next three to four months. Uh, so we're excited about the concepts in there. Uh, the one component is the modification of the school calendar uh, based on using some of the flexibility we had built in with a prior Act 80 day uh, submission. And that will give us the, the space and time to be able to do the planning that we need to, uh, to accomplish. So uh, we'll bring the actual calendar for the board's uh, consideration next Monday, but I've heard uh, positive feedback only about the concepts included in the five key points. So uh, that's the game plan there. And then we'll also do a, an FAQ document that will gradually update as new questions arise. Uh, for right now, we want to continue to settle into the continuity of learning plan, though. So, you know, the only change with the governor's announcement for Pennsylvania, it didn't really change anything. So we want to stay settled into the rhythm of what we're doing right now. But we do know there are questions, and we'll gradually update that FAQ. So we've already started, gotten that started this morning uh, with our principals and other administrators. That, that's it for me, unless there are questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? Oh, you know, I did want to say that I, I watched uh, Nancy's, uh, the graduation announcement video, and uh, I thought it was very nice. And I did send her an email just telling her, I mean, it, it brought tears to my eyes because I right. could see the emotion in her. And actually I was speaking with a friend of mine, and even though uh, she doesn't have someone in the, the school now, she said she teared up as well. I mean, it was definitely, she held it together, but it was really very well done and very heartfelt, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'll okay. share my, my excitement at those ideas, uh, Brian, that, that you conveyed um, in terms of the continuity of learning, uh, learning for now, and also preparing both for the summer uh, mm -hmm. to ensure that, you know, to fight as hard as we can against that drop back, especially mm -hmm. now, especially this year. Mm -hmm. And then also planning for, we don't know what may mm -hmm. uh, the fall may look like, but there could be intermittent closures. We could have quarantines of otherwise kids who need to do distance learning for extended periods. So all that flexibility is, mm -hmm. is great to see embedded into our planning now. Mm -hmm. And I'll repeat what I, what I shared with you uh, after your weekly update, which is please, you know, I want the administration to bring to us uh, what the needs are to achieve this. So I, I you know, for, for due consideration by the board that I don't want a lack of resources to mm -hmm. impede our progress in this area uh, at all. So I know we've done amazing work with just what we have now, redeploying the 900 Chromebooks, mm -hmm. making use of existing resources, but uh, by all means, if there are additional resources to let us know, uh, this, this program is very important to the community. It's very important right now, and it's going to continue to be important into next year. So what we need to do to support it, we, we want to know. Thank you. Okay. Next item is uh, buildings and grounds. Dr. Miller. Yeah, so this is, you know, part of the, the unforeseen challenges related to the shutdown nationwide in Pennsylvania, et cetera, is what impact does that have on various um, services and construction being part of that? 
Uh, so given the school closure through the end of the year and in dialogue with Dan Angan of VEBH, Mr. Zimmerman, who's on the call, contractors associated with some of the planned work in the district, there are certain things that if we're able to get the ball rolling now in since we will not be back on the campus specifically related to the earthwork um, on the field six project and some of the trucking and materials that are necessary to maintain pace. The early start will not uh, guarantee an on time or early finish. Uh, it's just one more uh, barrier to be able to overcome. Uh, all of it is certainly grounded in making the appropriate public health decisions through those companies and, and others, but we believe that approving the earlier start on the earthwork in field six will help um, give us the best possible outcome and allow that work to progress at the, at, in the natural way um, to, get that, to get the project done at the costs and et cetera that we're anticipating. So uh, that's the purpose of the recommendation. Uh, there is an administrative content. We, I put something in public content there to just give the big picture. But it's really the critical path of some of the trucking and materials um, based on some of the unknowns that are happening within the industries. And it didn't sound like that was going to impact the uh, stadium turf initially. Correct. Stadium turf will stay on its own timeline because it's it is scheduled to follow commencement ceremonies. So that June 8th date, Monday, June 8th, would be the earliest that can happen. And all of the, Mr. Zimmerman can speak up if I either misspeak or don't get it, but all of, we're, we're right on track in terms of the synthetic material and the colors and line painting and all the other stuff that needs to happen for that to be uh, manufactured. Just saying I wouldn't be disappointed if you had to peel back a quarter of that field to keep the kids off. Just, it wouldn't be a bad, I'm just saying. <laughs> Any other comments or discussion? Yeah, if I can. Um, this, this is, um, I'm, I feel a little uncomfortable right now because you know, I don't like to see progress impeded on anything. I can understand the wisdom of wanting to move forward. Um, it, it's a, it's a, a good project. Um, and uh, I also uh, can see how there can be chaos on the back end if we wait longer. Um, the other hand, though, uh, in this morning I looked up what the COVID-19 statistics look like. And Richland Township is the second highest number of cases in this county, except for the city of Pittsburgh. Um, and, and the rate of infection, 42.3 cases per 10,000 people is higher than just about anywhere. The only place that comes close is uh, St. Clair neighborhood in the city of Pittsburgh or Glen Hazel where there's um, you know, retirement facility uh, that's been hit hard there. Um, but, you know, even that neighborhood just has 19 cases, where, whereas Richland has 47 cases right now. And so, um, and they, you know, the next closest community uh, in number is McCandless. They're ranked number two with 24 cases. Um, but that's just half, essentially, of what Richland has. And Pine has 11 cases. And so I'm just wondering whether or not this is the time to open things up, um, given that those are the statistics. Um, I'm wondering if there's any way that we can wait two or three more weeks to see how this is shaking out, because this does seem to be when the peak is happening, whether that's possible or not. And I, and I don't want to anger anyone or, you know, I, I can see what the ramifications of delay could be. Um, at the same time, I think it's worth sharing this full picture about that. Um, and, I, and if I didn't, I would feel like I wasn't doing my job. So this is Chris, and um, I don't know it for a fact, except, uh, you know, it, initially when Richland cases started, 
that there was a, um, a piece in the, the Trib Review, and maybe there was one in the Post-Gazette, I didn't see it, but about uh, St. Barnabas. And I guess part of the assumption on my part is that that is where most of those cases are, but that's an, an assumption. I don't know if there's a way to find out. And if, and if so, if that's where most of them are, then it, to me, it's a more isolated, um, it, it really, I say, doesn't impact, um, ha have that impact as far as being spread out in the community at this point. Um, as far as McCandless, I guess my thought was there, there's also more retirement homes and so on, but I don't know what that population is. And again, that's a theory as far as, is it more in um, the, the communal type living? So with that really, with the work outside and, and uh, if all of the guidelines are followed as was indicated uh, by um, the, the notes that we had about the project, the, the standard precautions and so on with all of the workers distancing and so on. Um, I don't think that it would, it seems to be that it would be um, cause an increase in the, the likelihood of it spreading in the community. Yeah, I, uh, let me, Jeff's on the call, so I'll let Jeff Zimmerman speak to this because he's been leading with, uh, sure. with Dan Egan. But I think the, the purpose of this um, isn't to mean we're going to have, you know, 50 people on site doing work tomorrow. That's not it at all. It is uh, to lock in to, to, for the general contractor to be able to sign contracts for trucking assets now, reserving resources, and just getting things into the pipeline, which if not placed in the pipeline of work, um, have potential implications. So the public health and the health of workers and safety plans and CDC guidelines and, and so forth, all of it's dependent upon those things. Uh, but this is around allowing the contractor to sign contracts for trucking assets now and reserve some of the resources. I think I put gravel or, or uh, stone or something as an of that. Uh, Jeff, do you want to add to that? If, if before Jeff yeah. starts, I just want to make everybody aware that I believe it, uh, Mr. DiTulio has joined, it's, at least it's his cell phone number, so he has joined the conversation through phone. Okay. Jeff? All right. Hi, um, it's Jeff. Good afternoon. Um, just tagging on with what Dr. Miller said is that when we talked to Dan Engen, he said that the, the schools that he is counseling right now on projects, he's definitely tell them not to execute indoor projects uh, because of the likelihood of, of, you know, just people being within each other's uh, space um, and not being able to observe the CDC guidelines. With this project being outside, um, and we, like Dr. Miller said, it's going to be primarily trucking assets in the beginning. There'll be heavy equipment on site. Uh, where there'll be one operator per piece of equipment. Um, those gentlemen will be spaced apart doing work, um, not getting in each other's way with the heavy equipment. So I really feel <laughs> very, very low risk with that. The trucking assets will be contracted. They'll be coming right from the rock quarry or the fill site, bringing in the, the, the soil. And those gentlemen really never leave their vehicles during the entire day. They will definitely not leave their vehicles while they're on site with us. They'll kind of queue up in line. Um, they'll stay in their vehicles. They'll dump the loads and then go cycle right back to the, uh, the plant. So honestly, we, we feel like the number of actual headcount on the ground is going to be small. We'll, we'll be outside and we'll, we will be spread apart pretty far. Um, so as Dr. Miller said, this is really just helping us get ahead of uh, the purchasing side where we, we don't know where these contracts are going to be when we'll need them according to the original construction schedule in the first part of June. Uh, those brokers are unwilling to sign contracts with our, our GC right now because um, they use the term that's going to be like the wild west when this opens up because they won't be able to control pricing. Um, so we feel that we'll be able to safely isolate everyone that'll be on the job site as much as possible. And I don't see um, anything that we'll do now is what we would do different 60 or 90 days from now, actually. I think it would be the same process we would use to stay safe. Um, and we would do our best just to make sure that uh, we have as little exposure as possible.
this, this is Mark. I'll just add. So, thank you, Jeff, for that, and thank you, Brian. I mean, this this seems to be prudent. Uh, we're being responsible. Um, I support it. Any other comments? For the record, I do want to read it as a motion and get a second. It's a motion to authorize the Field 6 construction project contractors on-site activities to begin any time after April 14th in lieu of the current scheduled date of June 8th. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Last chance for any comments. Ms. Williams, can we do a roll call vote? Sure can. Mrs. Swope. Well, I, I believe that the outdoor construction should be safe enough. My only concern is those peak uh, dates that Ms. Dr. Bryan is forwarding, but for the Pennsylvania, the, the peak of the pandemic is April 15th for the use of the hospital resources and April 17th for the peak death. I don't know if we can put that within the schedule. It should be like two days of the delay uh, when it comes to April 14th, but maybe we could somehow work around those peak dates. But if that it jeopardizes the, the, the deadline of the June 8th, I guess I'm okay with it. This, this is Brian. Um, so just, just to be clear, and I want Jeff to speak to this, approving this action does not mean that a flurry of activity is going to happen in the next one, two, three, four, or ten days. Even it's it's merely allowing the contractors to begin lining up some of those uh, things. Is that correct, Jeff? That's correct. Um, like you said, they'll only be pre-positioning equipment here, so there'll be a few people here dropping off heavy equipment and parking it, and then they'll be just placing uh, assets out there that can put together our. Uh, soil erosion plan. So there won't be a lot of people on site uh, for the first two weeks. Okay, so maybe with those restrictions to the personnel on site, I, I, I approve. Dr. Meyer? I approve. Mr. Moy? Yes, I agree. Mr. DiTullio? Yes. Dr. Mihalik? I'm going to vote no. Mr. Kashani? Yes. Mr. Kashani? Yes. Dr. Campbell? Dr. Campbell? Yes. Mr. Lyons? Yes. Mrs. Misbach? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any virtual or in real life visitors, Ms. Williams? There are not. Should we make a motion to wish Dr. P a happy birthday? Yes. <laughs> happy birthday. Birthday. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> it's good to be 45. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many years, huh? Why are you laughing so hard, Chris? How many years My sons keep reminding me that I am 60 and I am in the high risk category. <laughs> I should not be going out at all. <laughs> I feel so old, believe me. <laughs> I would turn my video on, but I'm in my closet right now. It's the only place I could find some quiet in the house. <laughs> But to be clear, you are wearing a suit and tie, though. Yeah, correct. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. All right. Anything else to share for the good of the order? Seeing how there is nothing, meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye. Bye.